Coming up on First at Four, many Eastern Kentucky flood survivors still need help, and there are two public meetings focused on how to spend millions in grant money designed for flood recovery. Plus, members of Congress are planning to vote on whether to expel New York Congressman George Santos from the House chamber. Plus, we are dry for midweek, but showers are looming by Friday. Your forecast coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, nearly $298 million in federal grant money already set aside for Kentucky for helping flood victims will be up for discussion tonight and tomorrow at two town hall meetings. Earlier this year, we shared that the U.S. Housing and Urban Development was allocating the funds for eastern Kentucky communities that were impacted by the July 2022 flood. This is the everybody's chance to let the Department of Local Government, who's going to administer the money, um, know what the, the unmet need still is. Where are these dollars really needed? Um, is it rental housing? Is it home repair? Is it new construction? What sort of infrastructure is needed? Now, this evening's town hall meeting is in hazard at the Kentucky River Area Development District building. Plus, a Zoom option is also available as well. We have more information about this on our website. Well, as high pressure sits over the mountains on this Wednesday, we are once again watching out for some dry and sunny weather, but some big changes on the way by Friday. Let's take a live look, though, this afternoon overlooking Triangle Park in downtown Hazard. You can see plenty of blue sky. That current temperature also close to average on this Wednesday, sitting at 50 over in Perry County, up to 51 for London, 52 in Somerset, and 50 over in Harlan as well. A little bit cooler in southwest Virginia in the middle to lower 40s and upper 30s over in Wise at this hour. Up on first alert, pinpoint Doppler. Once again, we are dry as high pressure continues to sit over the eastern coast, and that will continue to bring some more dry air as we go into tonight. But again, those changes are looming mainly by late Thursday also into your Friday, but into this evening. If you have any plans, more dry weather is on the way. Those clouds do increase as we go late tonight as that next weather system is not too far away and overnight lows back in the middle to lower 30s, so not as cold, but still chilly as you wake up on Thursday back in the upper 50s on Thursday. More showers by Friday and then possibly some 60s by this weekend. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thanks. The U.S. House of Representatives is poised to hold a vote this week on a, re a third resolution to expel embattled Republican Congressman George Santos of New York. If two-thirds of lawmakers agree to impose the harshest form of punishment on their colleague, he would be just the sixth member in U United States history to be ousted. Santos has spent his entire first year in Congress battling calls to resign following revelations of deception. I think we get to about 150 Republican yeses. I, uh, there's a decent sense in the conference that the Ethics Committee um, is the due process or is the process uh, that should be afforded a member. And frankly, if it was put to a vote with his people in an election right now, you wouldn't win that election either. So I don't think his own constituents would, would support him. Santos is now facing nearly two dozen federal charges stemming from allegations by the Justice Department that he stole from donors and committed fraud. A cyber attack on a health care chain is affecting hospitals and patients from New Mexico to New Jersey. More than a dozen emergency rooms were effectively shut down in recent days, though they are now reopening. We do not know who carried out the ransomware attack or how much money could be involved. As CBS's Nicole Skanga reports, the hack is causing a serious inconvenience for patients. They informed me that my procedure for tomorrow had been canceled. J.D. Bloomer has had annual cancer checks since he was diagnosed back in 2008, but last week's cyber attack turned his routine visit in Topeka, Kansas into a scheduling headache. I asked, okay, well, when will we be rescheduled? And she says, when the network returns. In a statement Monday, Ardent Health Services said it first became aware of a ransomware attack on November 23rd, and its technology team proactively took its network offline. 
adding in an abundance of caution, our facilities are rescheduling some non emergent elective procedures and diverting some emergency room patients to other area hospitals. Ardent has not announced a timeline for when it could be resolved. But with 30 hospitals and more than 200 health care sites across six states, the attack is likely to cause a ripple effect impacting nearby hospitals. What we decided to call it was a, a blast radius. Almost. Dr. Christian Demeff is a hacker turned emergency physician who saw firsthand how a ransomware attack impacted his San Diego hospital after a 2021 hack crippled a nearby facility. We saw three times the number of ambulances one day than we ever had before because of a ransomware attack in our community. So far, at least 299 hospitals have suffered ransomware attacks in 2023. Life-threatening, time-sensitive medical conditions like stroke, trauma, heart attacks, all of these minutes truly matter. And when these systems are down, we can't do our job effectively. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, Washington. Hackers claimed responsibility for a ransomware attack at a hospital group in Louisville just last summer. Coming up on First at Four, this burst of cold weather serves as a reminder of taking care of the plants you want to keep during the winter. Plus, we are tracking soggy and breezy weather as we end the work week. Those details coming up after this break.